and I won't back down. Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View, Ladies Tea. Before we get the tea, I want to tell you about one of our sponsors, Swiss America. Our country's facing so many problems these days under Joe Biden. The last thing any of us need is more to worry about. Unfortunately, we now have to fear losing our freedom and privacy with the Democrats' new push for a digital dollar that could allow the government to tell us what we can and cannot buy with our own hard-earned money. That's why I'm encouraging every one of you tuning into the show right now to get The Secret War on Cash, an insightful report created by my friends at Swiss America. With this report, you'll learn how to protect yourself from the threats facing our freedom and your hard-earned money. The report is available right now to my listeners free of charge. Just call 1-800-289-2646 or visit www.swissamerica.com slash Trump for your free report. Welcome tonight. We have a couple of great guests. We love having them both. Director of Outreach for PragerU Kids. Welcome back, Jill Simonian, and editor in chief of the Post Millennial and Human Events, Libby Emmons. Ladies, welcome back. Turns out we're going to have some debates on our hands very, very soon. Um, I thought it was really amazing to see how the Biden team spliced together a 13 second video last week of Joe Biden, five jump cuts, Libby. They had to really pull out all the stops to get this guy to sound coherent throughout a 13 second video and really bring the old grandpa cranky energy to it to challenge Donald Trump to two debates because he says he beat him in all the debates, the two debates they did in 2020, beat him and he's ready to take him on again. Except Libby, they had very specific terms and accommodations that would, oh, go to benefit who? Joe Biden, that the Biden team laid out. No studio audience, of course, 30 second answers. If you're not the one talking, your mic is cut. They chose some very left leaning media outlets, uh, that they said th- these are the ones we would be willing to do uh, the the debates with. Moderators for the first one, of course, CNN. You have Jake Tapper and Dana Bash. And I think, Libby, that there are two things going on here. Number one, they thought that Donald Trump would be like, whoa, whoa, you came out real hot at me, Joe. That video was so scary and so unnerving that I don't know. I have to think about it. And Donald Trump was like, yeah, I'm in, Joe. I'll see you there if you can find the podium. Number one, he called their bluff. And number two, Libby, somewhere deep down, I'm looking at this and I'm like, let me just consider this for a second. Joe Biden, the guy who really can't even form two sentences, even when they're written in huge font on a teleprompter in front of him who needs his note cards to do anything in front of the public, they're going to put this guy up on a stage next to Donald Trump. In my mind, this is the beginning of the end for, or maybe it's the official end of Joe Biden. What did you think of the debate uh, suggestion by Joe Biden, Donald Trump's response? What do you make of all of it, Libby? It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I thought it was pretty crazy, too. I thought that these conditions are absolutely absurd. I will say that I believe Trump came out in March and said something along the lines of the DNC could set the terms of the debate. And the DNC quite took that early. But it's also a sign of confidence of the Trump campaign that they feel comfortable letting the DNC set these terms, saying, you know, we're going to we're going to beat you no matter what ridiculous nonsense you come up with as conditions for this debate. And so I do have a lot of respect and appreciation for that. I think that conservatives need to watch it a little bit with setting the bar to, uh, I don't want him to beat, you know, to beat Trump in the media simply because the expectations were too low. This yeah. is a guy who, you know, has certainly been capable in his career of grand rhetoric of, de- of of doing well in debates. And so I think it's important to remember that and to make sure that uh, in the media, at least, it's not perceived of that he is, you know, going to lose definitely because then all he needs to do is come out there with both shoes tied and he has a <laughs> has a chance of looking good in the media. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jill, Libby has a point. Maybe we should uh, raise the bar at least a little bit. For Joe Biden, I mean, my God, this guy is the current president of the United States, leader of the free world, commander in chief of our forces, the whole thing. We all we know about all that. 
Um, but I think that people really don't have very high expectations for Joe Biden, albeit if they pump him up in whatever fashion they do, like they did before, say, the State of the Union, Jill. And I don't know what is going on with Joe Biden, but there was that video at the end of last week with the big eyes and everybody's like, oh, see, he's on something there. Donald Trump has said, I think we should probably have a drug test before either person takes the stage for a debate. What did you, Jill, make of all of this? I got to tell you, I look at all of this now because it moves so very quickly every yeah. single day, right? There is, I mean, we, we've got like a million pieces of new information coming at us. And as a mom, I tend to look back, I mean, look at all of these things that are coming at us ahead of this election season. And I just, one, smile because I don't know what else to do anymore. And secondly, I think, you know what? This is good. Perhaps this is unraveling. Perhaps the American people are finally going to understand that we need to be a little bit more discerning with our standards. We need to hold people to higher standards because the average person now is really tired of what we've been going through. People can't buy bread. You have inflation. You have the border crisis. We have seen catastrophe after catastrophe, life-threatening, all of the, you know, these, these past four, four years. And, you know, I, I just hope that the American people finally say, hold on, we're not going to tolerate any more nonsense. Let's really raise our standards and hold people accountable for what they say and what they do. And I'm all for keeping people honest. If that means a drug test, then that's what that means. Okay. Well, I, I listen, I think that we want fairness. That should be just a, a, at baseline. You want something that's fair because the point of debates is it's really to give the American people a view of the candidates, the two people that they have the option or three, depending on if we get past these two and make it to the Fox News debate, which I think the Biden team said no to. Um, but it's to give the American people a view of the people that we want to possibly lead our country. And you should be able to really adequately hear from both of them from their, about their viewpoints, what both of these men right now have done in their past, because they have both now been president before, and how they are going to lead us into the future. I think for Donald Trump, it's, I mean, he's got the best message because the message is save America. The message is get us out of this mess. The message is support our biggest and, and closest Middle Eastern ally, Israel. These are things that people right now are like, where's Joe Biden on any of this? Why'd you leave the border open? Why are you taking away our energy independence? Why is inflation still so high? Why aren't you helping Israel defeat the terrorists? People are very frustrated with these things. And look, they're, they're going to have to hear from both of these men, and I think the least we can ask is that it's fair and whether that means a drug test or allowing someone to respond in the moment to what the other person potentially has said about them, I think those things are very important. Now, Joe, you just talked about the fact that we, the American people really have the option at this point to do the right thing and to really get a, a good picture of how they can make their life better with these two men. And I think what's been interesting to hear for me traveling the country, and now you're seeing it even with Joe Biden's own donors, is that people are starting to change their mind about Donald Trump. You see that all of a sudden, there are these never Trump donors, people who have historically donated Democrat and donated a lot of money previously to Joe Biden are saying because they feel like he betrayed the state of Israel, they are going to consider not only just not donating to Joe Biden, but actually voting for Donald Trump in this upcoming election. So the donors are leaving him. And you have things, Libby, like the, here's what they say. Four donors who contributed tens of millions of dollars in the 2020 election cycle said that they are reconsidering their giving from the last cycle now that they know where Biden stands on the Israeli conflict. You also had um, one man who they interviewed who used to be a staffer for Bill Clinton, says he voted for Joe Biden in 2020, and he says, I'm not voting for Biden. I'm not saying I'm voting for Trump, but it's a non-zero chance now that he could vote for Trump. Joe Biden is in a bad spot, Libby, and he only has himself to blame. 
So Libby, you have all of these former Biden donors, people who definitely voted for Joe Biden, even a guy who worked for Bill Clinton, who has been a lifelong Democrat saying, it's not a 0% chance anymore that I might vote for Donald Trump in this election. Joe Biden truly only has himself to blame because he is the one who has made all these bad decisions and dug this hole for himself. Yeah, I think that you're exactly right. And I think that these Bi these Biden donors will be fleeing the Democrats at this point due to the situation is in Israel, as you mentioned. It's really a huge deal. Biden is pandering to the far left wing of the Democrat Party. We saw that where he basically gave the college campus protesters a win by saying to them, oh, you've been protesting out here. OK, well, I will withhold uh, weapons shipments to Israel. I will withhold military aid to one of our closest allies, all because these kids who don't even know what intifada means, despite what they, they keep shouting it, who don't even know which river and which sea yes. chanting should, you know, <laughs> the, the Palestinians should have access to, they, they don't know anything, but Biden panders to them anyway. So if I were a major donor to Biden, if I were a major donor to the Democrats and I cared about America's allies. I cared about America's presence on the world stage. I cared about, you know, making sure that our allies know that we have their backs globally. Um, I would flee as well, not to mention if I were a Jewish donor, I would be pretty uh, hard pressed to give my money or my vote to Joe Biden. And we see this too. Michael Rappaport, the comedian and actor, keeps coming right. out saying, you know, it's on the table. Voting for Donald Trump is on the table. And if you care about our allies, um, there's really only one choice over here. Yeah, it's funny, Joe, because I assume Biden is getting advice from people around him who were saying, hey, you can't go too hard in the corner for Israel because you're going to alienate some of the voters that we're relying on in the Democrat Party to vote for you. You don't want to lose the support of Muslim voters who make up a percentage of the votes in states like Michigan and Minnesota. So you got to toe the line. You got to kind of play both sides. And it has backfired incredibly on Biden because now he's lost support of everybody. You know, Jewish Americans are like, wow, this guy never cared about Israel. He's now he's allowing anti-Semitism to be spewed on college campuses, allowing, as, as Libby just detailed, chants like intifada, threatening uh, Jewish students, uh, not allowing kids to get to classes and all kinds of crazy stuff like this is, is occurring on our college campuses. And at the same time, the folks who he's trying to appease on the other side of it are saying, well, he didn't go far enough. So he's kind of lost. And honestly, it's why right now, if you look at polling between Donald Trump and Joe Biden in states like Michigan and Minnesota, it is trending towards Donald Trump. We just announced about a week ago that we are, are planning to expand the map and we are adding Minnesota into our battleground ground state plan at the RNC and the Trump campaign. And again, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Joe Biden has been terrible in his decision making. And whenever you actually don't commit to a side and you try to play the middle like he has, you end up losing everything. And that's exactly what I think we're seeing happen. Yeah. And, you know, at PragerU, we, especially at PragerU Kids, we have this philosophy of if you just stick to the reasonable truth, you'll generally learn how to make the correct decision and you'll find you'll you know you'll stay on the right path and we've seen such an abandonment of truth and 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 specifically this administration's ability to make the right decision and and it's you know, it, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend that I'm any sort of political expert or geopolitics expert. I'm literally looking at all of this through the lens of being a mom, being an American citizen. And it's really terrifying how much pandering has oh. gone on to favor terrorism. So and it's that, crazy and disgusting. And that is the one thing we need to remember. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's shocking that this is, this is the United States and somehow we're just given a pass to, to actual terrorists, Jill. It's, it is wild. I assume, though, Libby, that the game plan is just lie to people. When the facts don't work in your favor and when you actually have nothing positive to show the American people that you've delivered for them and any policies, anything that you've done as president, as a party, 
then just go out and lie to them. And that's exactly what Joe Biden has been doing. This guy has been going on TV and an interview after interview, Libby, he's claiming that when he came into office, inflation was at 9%. It was at 1.4%, but he's just going out there with this talking point. And I assume that because some people are running it and not fully pushing back on it, I guess the play is like, maybe if you say it enough, people will ultimately believe it. The problem that I think they have though on the Democrat side is people feel like something is wrong. You can't just go out there and talk and spew these talking points when everyday life is so much more expensive. Since he took office, inflation has risen by 19.9% just on the, on the average. You know, you look at things like going to the grocery store, eggs up 43%. Uh, Baby food and formula up 30%. Frozen vegetables up 29.4%. Things we have to have every day. Electricity up 28.5%. Gasoline 55.5%. I was just out in California this past weekend. My gosh, bless you out in California. That gas is sky high out there. When everything is more expensive, Libby, and then you come out and you say, well, everything is actually going in the right direction. The real question is, do voters buy it? And I think we've kind of reached a point where people are like, I I think I'm just being lied to. Yeah, Americans don't like being lied to. That's one of our core values is that you tell us the truth, speak directly and recognize that we're smart enough to handle it. Um, Yeah, every time Biden goes out there, he makes up some lie or another. He lies about how he used to drive a truck. The other day he was was giving a speech and he was saying that he was vice president during COVID. It's like, no, you you definitely weren't vice president. under. Was locked up with Nelson Mandela. He's told some really (laughs) good ones. It's it's wild. I mean, and that's just that's just the stuff that he makes up when he's out there, not to mention the actual lies of the Democratic Party, which are very stark. They tell us that men can become pregnant. This we know is absolutely insane. They tell us that there's no difference between men and women. Uh, These are just some of the things, you know, he went out there and he was telling Morehouse grads the other day in his commencement speech that America doesn't really love them or care about them. That's a total lie. You have Democrats pushing it onto school children that black students will always be victimized and white students will always be superior. They engender these racial differences that just don't exist in this way. Uh, So the Democrats are full of lies. They love lies. They spew them every chance they get. So for Biden to go out there and say all of these made up things about the economy, it doesn't matter. It's all a pack of lies. That's what they continue to deliver to us. And I do think that voters are getting sick of it. And we see that. We see that a lot. And I do think it helps, too, that with um, X now, which is, you know, under Elon Musk, it has much more of a free speech atmosphere. And you also see that social media platforms are not able to suppress the truth in the way that they used to be able to do. And I think that's going to make a big difference, too. Yeah, I think it already is. And look, Jill, Americans are spending over one thousand dollars more per month I mean, at the end of the year, that's over $12,000 per person in this country more just to live life right now than they were before Joe Biden became president. And at some point, I mean, people might want to hate Donald Trump because the media told him that he's a bad guy. But the way I try to pose it to people is I say, listen, you don't have to love every aspect of someone's personality. Imagine this as a job interview. You're interviewing two candidates for a position in a company that you are running. And one candidate you know is going to be masterful at the way he does his job. He knows exactly what he's doing. You've seen him do it before. But maybe, I don't know, maybe you don't want to go get a beer with the guy afterwards. I don't know, for whatever reason. Quite frankly, I would, because it's a great time, let me just tell you, with Donald Trump (laughs) one-on-one. The other guy, on the other hand, is very, very much failing in anything he's ever done in this position. You know if you plug him in, you've already seen the bad results that he's delivered. And I don't know, he's he's not the guy that you're being told not to like, but I don't know, maybe he's just kind of tired, re- overly relaxed, shall we say, in a nice way. Between those two job candidates, if you're hiring someone for a position, you're always going to take the person who you know can execute that job and do a great job. That is just very, very basic. So I am always trying to talk to people about how do you convince friends of yours? Because that's the thing I always hear. People are like, I know people say 
they wish they could vote for Trump, but they just don't like his personality. I think we're done with that, Joe. I think we're beyond that. We aren't we beyond that at this point in the in the country. I think people have are not disillusioned anymore with any of that garbage because they they got sold a false bill of goods and look where it got our country. We have to be there. We have to be there. Yeah. We literally, I think, have no other choice but to you know that phrase check your ego aside, you know, have it, have it, have it, have we, we all heard that at work or in our lives somewhere. Listen, put your ego aside. This is what has to happen so that we can continue to move forward in a healthy way, in a productive way, in a way that is purposeful and beneficial for families and, 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 you know, people in our communities and our, in our social structure, we have to put our egos aside. And that is something that I, I can't get that phrase out of my head when I think about, talking to my friends and not only about this particular election, talking to them about what is going on in our schools, about what is going yes. on in the community, about what is going on at the state level. We have to put our egos aside, look at the facts, determine what the problem is, and then make a decision, whatever that decision may be, whether it's voting or whether it's volunteering at your school or hiring someone for a job, whatever, you have to put your ego to side to, to move forward. And that's where we're at in this country. And I think people are going to have to learn how to do that very, very quickly because it's beyond serious. <laughs> All right. If you suffer from chronic pain, I want to talk to you very quickly. Here's a way to help you get real relief. I think you guys know I am a fitness fanatic and no one understands recovery like I do. It is just as important as the workout itself. But whether you're recovering from an injury or just looking for everyday relief from pain in your joints and muscles, nerve pain, fibrosis, and inflammation, I recommend Golden Revive Plus from Up Wellness. This advanced all natural formula combines six powerful anti-inflammatory ingredients, including a proprietary turmeric extract that's 200 times stronger than raw turmeric. All of this is to address the root cause of your pain, reducing scarring, swelling, and tissue damage using the healing powers of nature to help your body heal itself. Formulated by husband and wife team, doctors Josh and Amanda Levitt, Golden Revive Plus gives you real pain relief and better range of motion, plus better heart, eye, and brain health. Join the over 300,000 Americans who are already using Golden Revive Plus to get and stay pain-free. For a limited time, you can try Golden Revive Plus for 30% off at goldenrevive.com. Just use promo code TRUMP at checkout. You might have heard Mike Lindell and MyPillow no longer have the support of their box stores or shopping channels the way they used to. They've been part of cancel culture. So they want to pass the savings directly on to you by having a $25 extravaganza. When Mike started MyPillow, it was just a one product company. But with the help of his dedicated employees, they now have hundreds of products, some you may not even know about. To get the word out, I want to invite my listeners to check out their $25 extravaganza. Two-pack multi-use MyPillows, just $25. MyPillow sandals, $25. Their six-pack towel sets, $25. Brand new four-pack dish towels, you guessed it, $25. For the first time ever, the premium MyPillows with all new Giza fabric, just $25. Orders over $75 will receive free shipping. This amazing offer won't last long. Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TRUMP or call 800-624-3945 today. Yeah. No, it's it's vital. It's it's This yeah. is about the future of the country. Um, I, I mentioned, Libby, that I was out in California over the weekend. And when I flew back, I had a flight, a red eye, from LAX back to, uh, to Miami in Florida. And um, the flight was at midnight. So in my mind, getting to the Los Angeles airport wasn't going to be so bad. Um, turns out I'm wrong. Apparently, anyone who lives in L.A., and Jill, I got to get your take on things in a second. Anyone who lives in L.A. knows that apparently when you go to LAX, you need to plan once you're on the airport grounds for like an extra 45 minutes to an hour just to get to the terminal. So I got there at like 10, 1030 at night. And I've never seen traffic like this. And the driver literally said, it is embarrassing when I pick people up 
at this airport who have flown in from all over the world that this is the first glimpse they get at America. I don't know why we keep dumping money. He said they keep dumping money into this airport and somehow they can't even get the traffic situation right. And Libby, to me, having spent a couple of days in California, I was and, and talking to people there, I was like, you know what? This is really analogous to the entire state and how bad the leadership is in this state at the top with Gavin Newsom, that if you can't even get probably one of the most important airports in the country, right? And you can't even get traffic in there in any sort of, you know, rational way and, and things that it's just crazy to, to go in there. I was shocked. Then how are you planning on keeping the state together as a whole? And I think the answer is he's not because it doesn't seem like it's working very well out in California, Libby. Yeah, I think a lot of things are not going great in California. We see that, you know, with Gavin Newsom, who you mentioned, he's got this whole thing about, you know, doing better with homelessness by spending a lot more money on it, uh, doing better with drug overdoses by spending a lot more money on it. Uh, during COVID, they spent a ton of money. They had a lot of extra restrictions that we didn't see even in, uh, in, in restrictive places like in New York, you know, it was far worse in California, shutting down businesses, all of this stuff. You have his EV mandates, you know, phasing out gas powered cars, which just seems like a total disaster for such a car heavy state like California. And yeah, the experience you had at LAX is one that a lot of people have. I hear from lots of people, you're coming to LA, don't fly into LAX, you know, fly yeah. somewhere else and then drive a long way to get there instead. Um, it's, it's out of control. Yeah, it's out of control. And California shouldn't be like that. It's a glorious state. It's got a lot yeah. of really great things to offer. Mountains, ocean, you know, good people, farmland, all of these wonderful things. Um, but they're, yeah, they're, they're really driving it straight into the ground. And to think that Newsom is one of the guys who's on the Democrat hopeful list, you know, for the right. next time out, that they think this is the guy who should lead the country. He's out there with his slick back hair and his snake oil salesman smile. And this is the guy who during COVID put all these restrictions on his constituents and then didn't adhere to them himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jill, you live out there. You live in LA. I don't know what the heck's going on with the airport out there. That was one of the craziest experiences. And it was really shocking. On the way there, the guy kind of talked about it. And I was like, well, it can't be that bad. It's like 10 o'clock at night. And I was like, oh, my God, this is insanity. Um, he is Gavin Newsom, your governor, is now being mocked for claiming that California, and I'll get your take on this, is now the national model for tackling homelessness. Libby just uh, alluded to it. He made an announcement of a $3.3 billion fund to deal with homelessness in California. Meanwhile, your state, Jill, has 28% of all homeless in the entire nation. That's a 40% increase from just five years ago. So perhaps he, he meant to say national model for attracting the homeless population and growing your homeless population, not decreasing it. What What is going on out there in California, Jill? It's a formula, I think, for how to destroy your state if you haven't done so already. And I don't say that lightly. I've lived in California my entire life and it's absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, my family's here, friends are here, roots here that go back a hundred plus years with my own family. And it really is heartbreaking. And I'll tell you the reality, if you drive around, and, and this is all up and down the state, mind you, this is in Northern California, this is in Central California, this is in Southern California. And I frequently drive in all three of these different regions in California. And what you will see is expansive, homeless encampments. You will see tents. You will see setups. You will see them on the side of the freeway. You will see them in the freeway underpasses. You will see them encro encro encroaching on the suburban areas. You will see them. Uh, there, there was, I remember a story um, a few months ago, there was, a, there was an issue where there was a homeless situation nearby a local school in an area that really you would not expect there to be a homeless encampment in. This is a dangerous situation. It's dangerous for citizens because most of these people, unfortunately, are addicted to very serious drugs. They are right. not well mentally. This is a, it's a safety situation where we really are scared when we go out. I, every time I go out to 
one of the main parts of Los Angeles. I live a little bit outside of Los Angeles, but whenever I go out to one of the city uh, city areas in, in Los Angeles, you're looking around and it is very dangerous and it's terrifying. And it's just a it, Gavin Newsom and the policies and the leadership has in fact destroyed this state. It's not hyperbole. Well, your tax uh, money is paying $3.3 billion, apparently. So let us know how it goes out there. Uh, you brought up schools, and, and we do talk a lot about schools and kids here on this show. And it turns out that there is a major teacher shortage right now in America. And what that is lending itself to and what's happening is that because these schools have to fill vacancies, they are now hiring unlicensed and really unqualified teachers to teach a lot of different subjects. The states suffering the most, Alaska, Montana, and Florida, Libby. And I guess teachers are saying that wages are very low. And they are also saying that recruitment is down because of that. But they're they're also feeling very disrespected as teachers that it's it's not a time that they feel you know like this is is such a, a a noble profession anymore and that the kids respect them and they have control of their classrooms um she said that a lot of teachers are living paycheck to paycheck while having to work through holidays just to cover like basic utilities and so now here we are libby we already know how bad it is for our kids in our in our general educational system. We are lowering standards. Some places are just removing standards altogether. The kids were behind after COVID. Most of them never caught up. Um, and now you have teachers who really are not qualified to teach either a certain grade level or certain subject matter who are just being plugged in because there is no other option. What could possibly go wrong, Libby? I can't even imagine. We've seen a lot of instances recently of teachers being guilty of uh, sexual abuse of minors, and that has been uh, story after story keeps emerging about these situations, and they're really devastating. We also have seen, of course, teachers indoctrinating students into LGBTQ and gender identity and anti-racism and activism and all of these different things. And I wonder also, you know, certainly what's going on with teachers not being respected and whether or not those are considered to be dignified professions. We don't necessarily have dignified professions at this point. That's just not something Americans yeah. consider right now. In 2019, there was polling out that said that most kids growing up in the U.S., they wanted to be vloggers and YouTubers. They want to be oh. influencers. That's what they aspire to. So I think we do need a message to come back into education that hard work is a good thing, that it's rewarding, that it's rewarding to help others, that being a teacher is not, you know, just this garbage profession. Um, and that's something we've had a lot of people who go into teaching are going into it for the activist qualities. And that's a problem, too. So you have pushback all across the spectrum whether teachers are being indoctrinated into ideologies or whether they're just underperforming and not good or whether they're these, you know, predator types of people or whether they just don't care about their jobs. And of course, you still have some of the good teachers out there. Um, but we need to get the message back into education that work matters, that activism is not the only thing that's out there, that being an influencer or a movie star or whatever it is that the kids are aspiring to these days is not the only thing that gives your life meaning. I, uh, you know, meaning is where you find it. Meaning is in helping others and, 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 uh, you know, taking pride in the work that you do. And that is something that I think is missing for teachers and across the board. Well, it, another thing that I, I keep um, thinking about, too, is, you know, we have allowed so much of our society to degrade Jill in so much as we just aren't punishing people who are breaking the law, criminals. You know, there are really no repercussions like there probably should be in a lot of uh, major cities, at least for people who are cr career criminals. And they're just turned back out on the street. And what that does is it tells other people, well, hey. You can get away with this too. Similarly, there was a very troubling map that was released by the Daily Mail that showed that these schools not only are having trouble recruiting teachers, but they're also very soft on the kids who are troublemakers. So they have this woke policy now that says that 
basically, if you have a kid who is acting up where you used to expel that kid or at least send them home from school, suspend them for a certain number of days, they have a new woke approach and it's called restorative justice. And it has spread to 506 school districts here in America. And um, this violent and disruptive behavior is essentially just tolerated, Jill. And there really is no way. California, of course, God bless you guys, leads the the um, country with 335 of those districts in your state of California alone. And supporters of this restorative justice say expelling disruptive kids has failed. And it's better to sit down with the offenders and victims at the same time and talk about problems. Of course, the critics say it often leaves troublemakers unpunished, you think, and encourages defiance, disruption, and violence in the classroom. So if you're a kid who thinks it's funny to just cut up, you don't want to be there in school anyway, and you want to cause a problem, there's nothing that is going to happen to you. You can go back every day and you can keep doing this. And I look at these things and in a lot of ways, it's, it's frightening because we have a shortage of teachers. The teachers don't want to, the good teachers aren't going to go into these schools anymore because why would they? They got to deal with this kind of garbage. And it reminds me of what's happening with law enforcement officers, with our military recruitment. When you make the general environment such that people are not inclined to work in that profession anymore, guess what? They're not going to come be a teacher. They're not going to go be a police officer. They're not going to join the military. Uh, this kind of stuff is going to become such a problem if we don't turn this around. That is a really sad thing that they're just letting these kids get away with all of this. Well, yeah. And quite frankly, it already is a problem. And the the philosophy of restorative practices is something that I actually have followed quite closely the past few years since I've been at PragerU Kids, because restorative practices is a part of this diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives mm -hmm. that are now pretty much in every single school district across the country. The philosophy is, just like you said, if you punish a student, it's seen as oppressive. Well, we know oh. that's nonsense because <laughs> when there are no consequences, look what happens. Look what happens when there's no law and order. Look what right. happens when there's no rules. When there aren't consequences, of course, children are going to continue to get worse and worse and worse in the classroom. And it's that I think, you know, when you're talking about there's the shortage of teachers and then there's restorative practices, all of this goes hand in hand. And it's a question of what comes first, the chicken or the egg, because you right. do have good teachers that are saying absolutely not. I don't agree with the way that our education system has been broken down into this DEI model where there are no consequences. The good teachers will not put themselves in the situation anymore to be abused and harassed by students if they cannot implement consequences to that behavior. I mean, you know, what reminds me a lot, a few years ago, we did a documentary called The Biggest Bullies in School, and it was about the teacher unions. And it was about how no matter what horrible, awful thing a teacher did, if they were a part of that union, they were not allowed to be fired. And look yep. at what's happening in our education system now. No matter what a child does a child in many cases can throw a chair across the room they can uh, physically abuse another student another teacher they can harass them and that child will not get suspended and it's tragic and it's just one of the many things that California can claim leadership on the demise of our schools and the demise of our social structure with things like restorative practices yeah and I mean Joe look it, it is this is something you typically see in blue states and in, in blue areas of the country. And it there's no doubt that there's there's something to that. Whenever you have bad leadership and people who make these decisions, um, it's very harmful. It's harmful to our kids when it comes to the schools and it's harmful to the overall community. Um, you saw that a lot of people moved out of states like California and New York and they went to states like Texas and Florida, and it's because they wanted to live their life more freely. They wanted to escape all of the um, burdensome regulations and, and all the crazy stuff that's going on in these blue states. Well, there was a neighborhood, uh, a couple of neighborhoods in Texas, and they are part technically of Austin, Texas, 
but they are trying to secede from Austin because they're saying they're getting absolutely no help whatsoever from the city. This is this is a crazy situation down there. They're now having to hire Libby off-duty police officers because the city of Austin doesn't have enough cops. Hey, remember when they wanted to defund the police? Wow, guess what? They don't have enough officers now to respond whenever there is an emergency situation. Their anti-cop policies, of course, vastly different from the rest of the state. And that has been a, a huge problem down there. So all these officers are, are retiring early or leaving the police force there in Austin and going to other cities. And the cop vacancies mean there's not enough people, as I just said, to respond when there is an emergency. Any call that isn't considered life or death emergency is now rerouted to the non-emergency 311 Libby. So these residents are actually trying to push to secede from the city of Austin. And I'll tell you what, good for them. If your city is not serving you, if you feel like things are not working for you, wherever it is you live, you've got to, you got to push back. You've got to make some noise. You've got to do something in order to make it right. And these citizens are like, hey, I'm paying into this. My tax money is going into something and I'm getting absolutely nothing out of it. Our life is more dangerous. They say break-ins are normal, normal. car break-ins are normal. People are showing up in garages. Sometimes it feels like a powder keg willing to blow. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for these people in Austin who want to protect their homes and want to protect their communities. I think that that's great. And I hope that they're able to do that. The thing with defund the police also is even in places where they didn't actually pull funding from police, the effect of the defund the police movement was to really diminish morale among police officers right. across the country. We saw increases in retirements and decreases in recruiting. Kids don't aspire to be uh, cops any more than they aspire to be teachers. You know, it goes back right. to what we were just talking about before. And that's a real problem. Austin is a, a kind of a totally disgusting city. I was just there recently. It's filthy. Uh, there's people just openly doing drugs on the on the streets downtown, where there's pedestrians and people walking with their families, and it's kind it's kind of really gross. So if <laughs> if I were living in Austin, I might want to secede as well, along with this town. Um, the the crisis that we see in our downtown areas is very pronounced. And when you remember what they were like, even just five years ago, where you could walk around after dark with your families, no problem, no concerns really about safety, other than your basic, we're in a metropolitan city, there's a lot of people kinds of concerns. It's really a shame what we've done to the, um, you know, jewels of our nation. It's it's such a shame, Jill. And, uh, you know, I again, I just I applaud these people for trying to do something because I feel like a lot of people right now feel helpless and they're like, you know, I wish that I could change my situation wherever it is I live. I wish that there wasn't as much crime. I wish that, you know, gas wasn't so high. I wish that, uh, you know, my taxpayer money wasn't going to fund people breaking our laws to illegally enter our country or we're sending it overseas um, and, and not here and putting America first. And guess what? There is something every single one of us can do. And that comes on November 5th of this year. And wherever you live, it comes whenever early voting starts as well. A lot of states that's September. I would tell people right now, pay a close attention, not just to the top of the ticket as we head into what I really believe is the most critical election of any of our lifetimes. Don't just pay attention to the top. We know we've got to get Donald Trump elected as the 47th president. We know that we want to expand the lead in the House. We know that we need to take back the Senate. That way we actually affect change in this country. But pay attention to the down ballot races as well. Look at this situation in Austin. These people were so fed up with what their local government had decided that they're like, we can't even be a part of this city anymore. Look at who is running for your local school board. Look all the way down the ballot and research these people as we head in to September, October, and November of this year. This is the time we all need to be engaged. We all need to get involved. And I, I think we all have an opportunity, Jill, come this fall to make huge changes across this country and really speak up 
in terms of our values and the direction we want to see this country head. Nothing could be more important. I encourage everybody to pay very close attention to all of this. Yes. And here's the thing, too. We have gotten to a place in the last few decades where everyone is just comfortable. I, I even want to say the past hundred years, the past hundred yeah. years, we have all had very comfortable lives and we've never had to be in that position that many of us read about from our history books hundreds of years ago when people really had to dig deep and find that grace and grit and really make moves for the betterment of society. And those people had to be informed and they had to be active and they had to be engaged. And now we are now in a time for such a time as this, many like to say, yes, we need to dig deep. We need to find that grit and grace and we need to become informed as parents, as teachers, as as uh, anyone, doctors, medical professionals, everyone needs to become informed about what is really going on and go from there. Well, listen, um, I appreciate it, ladies. You are both well-informed and you are both wonderful. Thank you for your perspective on all of this. Libby and Jill, both of you today, thanks for joining us. And to everybody at home, as always, thank you so much for joining us here on The Right View. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow, and we'll see you back here next time for more. And I won't back down Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it.